Um, and, and this is all research backed as, as employee share schemes are proven to increase engagement of employees and therefore retention. And talent, you know, we just know in the current climate that talent's so important for businesses. Richard Liu here, editor at nzentrepreneur.co.nz. Uh, and today on the knowledge base, uh, I'm, talk I'm talking to Luke Smith. Luke is the chief exec at Orchestra. Um, and he's here today to talk to us about employee share programs. So if you've ever wondered about how you as a founder or a team may be able to set up some sort of um, share option program or share equity with uh, employees, um, that's what Luke's going to talk to us about today. Uh, joining us from Auckland. Hi, Luke. Kia ora. Thanks for having me here, Richard. Well, good. Now, um, for those who haven't heard of Orchestra first and foremost, um, can you tell us a bit about uh, what it is you guys do and um, you know, some of the problems you help uh, your customers solve. Yeah, so Orchestra is a New Zealand-founded uh, startup. Um, we help businesses that have some form of distributed ownership, whether they've done that through raising multiple rounds of capital to different investors or they're crowdfunded or they're issuing shares to employees through a share scheme. And so we're purpose-built software for unlisted companies to easily issue and track equity, streamline stakeholder engagement all from one place. So it's it's kind of like sharesies for companies that are not listed on a stock exchange like the NZX. Um, and, and I guess um, to your point, Richard, around the problem that we're solving is without something like Orchestra, this can be pretty complex for founders and operators to wrap their head around. Um, there is some compliance around it. It can be quite cumbersome to manage in spreadsheets or out of email and Dropbox and can be prone to error um, if it's not managed professionally. So put simply, and, and I guess tying to the brand and the name of Orchestra is we harmonize equity ownership. And we're, we're currently working with uh, hundreds of, of businesses all the way from early stage startups through to multinational um, corporations. Can we talk a bit about... Um... Ensure uh, employee share programs or um, mm. ESOPs, uh, employee share options uh, plans. Um, so, you know, if if you're a founder of a startup, um, there, and you're, you're wondering about how you can attract great team members uh, to mm. to your business, um, often you know you don't have all the funds to just go hire whoever you want, and so um, we've seen that uh, many companies have said, well, you know come and work with us and we're going to reward you uh, with some equity in our business. Mm. So um, can you tell us a bit about that in general? Like what are the benefits of, of doing that? And then what are some of the key things that um, we should be aware of, you know, if we're considering that as sort of a, a structure for our business or as a way of, um, you know, incentivizing people to come uh, join our mission? Yeah, great. Yeah, and 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 just want to clarify up front, like you can use an employee share scheme just dis, despite the industry in or the or the stage of life, but it is very table stakes in startups for the point that you've just mentioned, where you're probably a bit cash strapped initially, um, where you're still proving out product market fit, might be early revenue, but there's not a lot of cash in the business, or you're having to raise that capital, and so employee share schemes, particularly in that point, are a good way of offsetting what you might get, you know, as an employee working at a corporate on a market salary or, you know, various corporate perks. Um, I guess, you know, the benefit, I think it's a good place to start. What's the benefit for the employee, right? We'll start there and then we'll flip it on what's the benefit for the company. But for the employee, what you're giving uh, them is the, you know, potential wealth creation effect of, you know, when, when you're given shares in the company or options, the right to buy shares in a business, you're giving them the uh, opportunity to participate and the upside value creation of that business over time, right? And so you, the way I put it is, you know, you're, as an employee, you're sharing in the fruits of the success of that company that you're pouring a lot of effort into. Um, second benefit is there's, when you're offered ownership in a business, the business is saying, hey, we really value you and your contributions as an important part of what we're doing here in the company. And the third thing I'd say is that because you're given ownership in a business, you are privy to extra information like financials, you know, um, accounts, 
and should have, you know, you, you're allowed to ask for information around strategy and things, which really helps you in your role and the context to make the right decisions. It builds that trust um, as well because you've got that information that you need to do your role well. And then on the flip side for companies, um, and, and this is all research backed, is, is employee share schemes are proven to increase engagement of employees and therefore retention. And talent, you know, we just know in the current climate that talent's so important for businesses and tenure of talent. Um, secondly, it's shown to really increase the culture, you know, those positive attributes of more collaboration, higher transparency and trust, which is what you need and, and, and you hopefully want in your business to be able to be a high performing team. And then thirdly, and probably because of those two aspects, it's proven to improve performance. So both both revenue growth, but also productivity. So the efficiency of the business. So those are some of the benefits. Yeah, both on what why you would give it to your employees, but why it's good for a company to have as well. Excellent. Um, now I'd like to talk a bit about um, the compliance side of things in terms of yep. managing a share register and and you know um, how we go about uh, yeah basically doing it all properly when we've got um, people within the team with with shareholdings. But could we could you first sort of um, talk to us a bit about uh, the difference between just straight out shares versus share options, right? Yeah. Especially in yeah. the context of the startup world. Um, so for those who may not be familiar with the concept, how, how exactly does that work? Yeah, okay. So, and and yeah, so I'll, I'll just explain that quickly. So, you know, the way that we describe it at Orchestra, and, and it's actually how we started, is we started as a cloud-based share register tool for unlisted companies. And, and I'll explain the difference between a share register and what's a cap table, a capitalization table, which is you know anything that might tie back to equity ownership in a business. So a share register is the, you know, there's a legal requirement on businesses to hold a share register outside of the New Zealand company's office. And it needs to really mirror what's on the company's office. And what that is, is any issued shares um, that are held by shareholders today. Right. But then a business can also have unissued shares or securities. And an example of that is options. You know, if you're a startup and you're familiar with certain terms around capital raising, maybe you've heard of something like a convertible or a safe note, which is a loan that's given by investors that would convert into equity and into formal shares where one day they'll be on the company's office, but it hasn't yet happened yet. And so the difference between a share register and a capitalization table is issued shares plus unissued shares. Um, and so we we cater to all of those aspects. So the share register itself, you know, we help companies um, administer it. We have a direct integration to the company's office and you do your annual filing through us. But a big part of what we also do is managing the administration and providing an employee portal for, or an investor portal for some of those unissued securities. It's a bit of a complex topic, but hopefully that helps um, differentiate, yeah. Yeah. yeah, cool. And um, look, such a key thing for founders to get their heads around uh, as well, um, you know, because, you know, putting it bluntly, um, you know, yes, we want to be trying to build our organization and attract the best talent and, and um, mm. build something that works and achieves our impact goals. Um, but without keeping your, your tabs on exactly what's happening with who, mm. you could find yourself in a very tricky position uh, in terms of dilution. So, you know, every time we give away equity in, a, equity in our company, our yep. own shareholding gets diluted, right? And yep. it's important It's important to keep across that, especially if you're maybe looking to raise um, capital through structured, say, seed rounds or uh, angel or, or venture capital. Um, can you talk to that? Yeah, 100%. I think, I, think, I think it's important to know what what market looks like. What I mean by market, like, is what are people doing and, and what's, what's sort of the benchmark when I'm thinking about you know, what, what should my ownership look like as a founder? How much should I be giving away if I'm, you know, considering offering um, shares to employees? And it's important to have a really good way of, of administering and staying on top of it and making sure it's ordered. There's a quite a prominent, um, actually, Serge Van Dam won't mind me saying this, but we were having a conversation and, and he's a very experienced operator, investor, director, and he said in his experience, he's seen, you know, valuation haircuts 
of companies when it comes to raising around or you know being acquired of about 10 to 15 percent if the ownership in the business just seems like a mess it's a bit of a you know you just get a bit scared if you're acquiring or you're an investor and it just seems messy yeah well so um up to 10 to 15 percent yeah just if, if the perception is that you don't really have a good handle on the ownership side of things or, or say your cap table you know an employee share scheme at the end of the day it's a, it's a legal agreement between the company and employees to have a stake in the business and the reason it's a legal agreement is because you could make them you know without that legal agreement and thinking through the what if you know what if an employee leaves what if we get acquired uh you know how am i given you know you 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 can run into some tricky situations, and so that that's really what it is. It's it's a it's a legal framework to be able to issue ownership to employees. And so you know some things that you want to think about up front is what is what is my why for the business? Like why am I doing this? What do I expect the employees to get? Um, once you've got that figured out, it's a very flexible instrument, so you can get you know you can really tailor it to your strategy. But then you would think. What's the scheme that I'm implementing? So it might be options, which is you get access to the potential increase in the value of the company over time. It might be something like a loan to purchase scheme that's more profit share based. So you get a part of the dividend, you know, and you pay down, you know, you, you sort of like earn the right to those shares over time by using the dividends to buy the shares over time. And then you get into what I call the ingredients or the design settings. And those are things like how much am I going to put aside um, who am I going to give it to? Is it the whole team? Is it just the leadership team? How are they going to earn those over time? Because you want it to be a real retention benefit. So is it time-based, based on tenure to incentivize them to stay? Is it based on that? Is it based on milestones, you know, company milestones? And then what happens if they leave? What happens if we got acquired? Um, so we th those are all the things that really, like at a high level, that you need to think through to have a really effective plan. And so um, we, because we've seen a lot of these set up, we are not advisors ourselves. We can sort of talk about, we can we can explain those things and help guide uh, founders um, or operators who are looking at this. And then we can put them in touch with the right advisors who set up that legal agreement. Well, look, it's been fascinating talking to you um, about this subject. Luke, um, thank you so much for your insights and um, wishing you guys all the best. Uh, cheers for joining us. Yeah, thanks, Richard.